You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cyberwire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down the threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems of protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. So in about 2020, uh, the U.S. government um, indicted... um, a number of members of Blackfly and, and a related group that we call Greyfly. That's Dick O'Brien. He's a principal intelligence analyst with Symantec's Threat Hunter team. The research we're discussing today is titled Blackfly Espionage Group Targets Materials Technology. Uh, and sort of uh, the indictment, you know, obviously this is. Uh, these are charges, and, and these people have yet to appear in court. But the indictment does appear to to kind of um, uh, put this group in the spotlight uh, a little bit uh, and give some kind of insights in, into how these these Chinese sponsored groups um, work. And what exactly do we know here? Uh, what we know here is is that um, it is uh, Blackfly and, and Greyfly. Uh, they were often considered to be kind of related groups, and indeed a lot of vendors considered them to be one group, and, and they, they refer to them under uh, the umbrella name of APT41. And uh, it seems that uh, a number of these the people who, who used to work for Greyfly uh, at the time uh, were supposedly working in a technology company in Chengdu in China, uh, but they also had links with the Chinese Ministry of Public Security. And then uh, a number of these people also worked uh, with some uh, people in Malaysia and seemed to be uh, involved in uh, initially in attacks for financial gain, but they seem to have branched out into more commoner garden um, espionage. And this is, is, the, is the group that's, that's known as Blackfly. That's an interesting uh, element there that I, I don't think I was familiar with, the, the kind of crossover to Malaysia. I have to say, I, I'm, I guess I'm a little surprised that the Chinese government would tolerate that. Um, I think uh, from what it's, it would seem, certainly going by these indictments anyway, um, it, it's that uh, there's a lot of uses made of um, third-party contractors. Uh, so these people uh, may do some work on behalf of the Chinese government, but they also may do some work on behalf of themselves. And it's a very different way of working to maybe other nations uh, who tend to keep everything in, in-house and closely tied with their own intelligence agencies. Uh, but we have seen other countries uh, work in a similar fashion, most notably Iran. So in this uh, set of research that you all have released here, you're saying that they're targeting some materials technology companies. Can you 
flesh that out for us? Who, who are they going after here? Um, I can't really uh, give you too much uh, detail beyond what we, which we say in the blog, um, except that you know there, there are two subsidiaries of one uh, conglomerate, uh, an Asian company, uh, both of which are, are in, I guess, what you could broadly speak, uh, describe as the materials and, and composite sector. So reading between the lines, you would probably think in this case they're looking for intellectual property. I see. And and is that the, the typical playbook for black fly? I mean, what's the what's the spectrum that they're known for? Yeah, I would say so, all right. Um uh, back when this group first kind of came on the scene and began making a name for itself, it was known for just attacking gaming companies. And then when the indictment came out, um, it sort of made sense in that um, uh, these people were using some of the tools they use um, for espionage attacks to make some money on the side by attacking the gaming sector. But now Blackfly, I, it's very, it's, it's hard to say, but they seem to have kind of uh, moved more into the orbit uh, of traditional espionage. Uh, so we've seen them going after semiconductor companies, telecoms firms, pharmaceutical, media, advertising. Uh, you name it, uh, really, for a very broad range of sectors. Um, now, whether that is at the behest of somebody else or whether they're acquiring this intellectual property to to sell it to the highest bidder, who knows? Uh, but we do know that there are confirmed links uh, with, the, with the Chinese um, security services there. CISOs everywhere invest huge amounts of time and money to defend against external threats and protect sensitive data stored inside their organizations. But how do they protect sensitive data that's constantly being shared outside with others? The answer is data-centric security from Vertru. It's affordable, simple to deploy, and integrates elegantly with the collaboration apps you use every day, like Google Workspace and Microsoft 365. Trusted by more than 8,000 organizations, you can try Vertru for free. Just visit Vertru.com slash Cyberwire. That's V-I-R-T-R-U dot com slash Cyberwire. And what's the distinction between Blackfly and Grayfly? Um, there's some shared personnel between the two groups. Um, but uh, there are, um, I guess, there probably uh, there are distinct teams. If for want uh, uh, is the best way to describe it. So some people work for both, but they are distinct um, operations. And Greyfly is probably more uh, closely tied in with the state-sponsored espionage. I suppose you know, touching on the indictment. I mean, that's primarily, a, I guess, a, a political statement more than anything else. Um. It it is uh, in the sense that um, uh, the suspects uh, it probably uh, unlikely that they will uh, get to a courtroom uh, in the United States, um, but it does it kind of lay down a marker really of uh, we know who you are, we know what you're doing, um, and if you ever um, if we ever have the oppor- opportunity to arrest you, we will. So, yeah, I mean, it is a political statement in, in that uh, sense, but it's also, I guess, um, you know, um, a move in, in the kind of um, in the power plays that go on between nation states. Right. Be careful where you vacation. Yeah. I mean, it, like <laughs> this, it, uh, you would be uh, surprised at the amount of suspects um, who are arrested while on vacation. Um where somebody is wanted in in a jurisdiction, usually the U.S., and they're a, a based in a country that doesn't have an extradition treaty, a treaty with them, um, and they decide to travel, and um, it turns out that uh, authorities have been watching them, and they're arrested in that jurisdiction and, and extradited. What are your recommendations here for uh, organizations to, to best protect themselves against this sort of thing? Um, I think... The general recommendations about targeted attacks um, do tend to apply to to black fly, um, and so uh, it's lots of different recommendations. Really, it's about kind of um, adopting a defense in depth um, security posture. Uh, so, number one, uh, be aware of of how these. Um, 
groups tend to compromise your organization. Uh, spear phishing emails are very popular. Uh, the other big one we're seeing at the moment is the exploitation of um, vulnerabilities in public facing applications. Um, the attackers increasingly uh, are staying on top of uh, when new vulnerabilities are found in enterprise applications and um, looking for uh, organizations that are slow in patching them. And the other thing then, I guess, is to be aware of how these attacks tend to unfold. Uh, so the next step, once they kind of get access to a, a machine on the network, um, is stealing credentials. Um, administrative credentials are particularly valuable. So you have to kind of think about how you lock down them, like changing them regularly, adding two-factor authentication. And then they, they tend to um, use those stolen credentials to move laterally across the network uh, and exfiltrate data. So it's, um, you know, it's not a, just about having the best of breed security software, that always helps, but uh, there's all of these uh, best practices as well to adopt. Our thanks to Dick O'Brien from Symantec's Threat Hunter team for joining us. The research is titled Blackfly, Espionage Group Targets Materials Technology. We'll have a link in the show notes. CrowdSec's CTI distributes IP reputation intelligence, allowing SOC teams and security analysts to obtain highly curated data on intrusion attempts, origins, and trends. Sourced from a large network of real users from all over the world, operating a large variety of services and apps, CrowdSec's CTI provides actionable data and clear insight into cyber threats, allowing for a faster response as well as resource development and allocation. Find out more at crowdsec.net. The CyberWire Research Saturday podcast is a production of N2K Networks, proudly produced in Maryland out of the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technologies. This episode was produced by Liz Irvin and senior producer Jennifer Iben. Our mixer is Elliot Peltzman. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. <laughs>